first of all, thank you for having me here. And it's it's really been a pleasure to hear the stories um, from Adam and Sayed. And it's, it's really nice to also hear because I think uh, many of us or many of us that have kind of seen the, the uglier side, I suppose, of the uprisings um, in the time since 2011 are being geared towards this place of seeing the interconnectedness of it all. And I think because a lot of it um, was stimulated through social media, which is a global platform, so we were kind of seeing things unravel in real time. Um, and I think that reconceptualized solidarity for us um, and redefined it. And we're in the process of redefining it together. So it was really nice to hear everything because it, I just related uh, so much to what's being said. And I think that's really what solidarity is. It's relating um, without necessarily saying, I know exactly how you feel. Um, but saying, I know what this looks like. This looks like oppression. Um, and it's just another mask or another face and it's wrong. Uh, so I want to really add uh, also on what Adam was saying in terms, do we really show conditional solidarity? Do we show solidarity um, because of uh, 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 being connected, for instance, through the tear gas? I know the tear gas that was used in Ferguson that was used um during the, the Wall Street protests was the same uh, tear gas that was used here against us. Uh, uh, the same company, the same everything. But is that the reason to show solidarity? What if we're not connected at all? What if I can't really? And that's where I, what I mean is we're reconceptualizing solidarity to look at the systems of oppression more. And I think we faltered into a mistake of trying to humanize each other um, to ourselves, to each other, and to the world. And by each other, I mean those of us who are undergoing these, these very difficult struggles um, and trying to come together. But in trying to humanize ourselves, we dehumanized ourselves. How many photos have you seen of protesters who just lost their eye or they're bleeding and gushing or the clouds of gas smoke? And how many of them can you tell apart? because I think they all look the same, that if you aren't told where this is, you will very easily think this is in your backyard. Um, and so we need to start highlighting these tactics that they're using against us because it's a system. And, and again, similar to what Adam was saying, oppression is thousands of years old. It didn't begin now. Um, and it is, it's, it's guided kind of by our ability to just see things as black and white as up or down in these binaries, right? So I know, and in, in from my activism, and I know from my time in Palestine, on the ground, and 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 just you know, when we're quote unquote intellectualizing <laughs> um, our activism, is I always thought that the the quote unquote the intellectuals aren't a part of mobilization. They're just sitting and they're just talking and they're just. Um, turning simple ideas like community to some complex um, series and books and all of that. Uh, and it was only later on that I realized, no, that's their role. And that's what solidarity is. That's what they're good at. They're good at unpacking the realities um, as we live them. Uh, there are people like me who can go to the street, who can protest, who can take months on top of months and then years on top of years of tear gas inhalation that I have no idea what's wrong with my lungs already at this point. But my mother and father can't. Um, some people don't want to. My sister, when my sister came with me to a protest, I told her, sis, you have a son. <laughs> I'm this 21-year-old um, woman. It's okay. Let me risk it. But you have a son. Go home. And I remember feeling so guilty because as if I was betraying the cause by telling a person to not protest, to not be on the street. But I also know my sister's role wasn't the street. That's not what she's good at. My sister's role for our struggle is her building an education system. And that's what she's doing. Um, I think we mistake solidarity in that we have to say, I'm doing this because I'm in solidarity. No, you just do. You do solidarity is the act of getting uncomfortable. 
how many times have you walked past um, someone who is homeless or someone who is begging for money or resources and you just turned away? Not because you don't want to give, but because maybe you didn't have change that day, but you were so uncomfortable that it was better to turn away than to actually do something. How many times have you justified someone homeless being in the street? Oh, well, they're probably addicts, right? Or well, they're probably gonna go and buy some, some alcohol. Well, what if that's what keeps them warm at night? Um, I think I, I, I read this somewhere that there are studies where, you know, the alcohol helps actually keep your bodies warm. So it's this understanding also that if you wanna help someone, you don't make up the obstacles. You don't make up how that liberation should look for them, right? You have to be uncomfortable enough to know that your support doesn't mean your vision. It means theirs. And you helping other struggles reach that. And, and the, the, the reason I'm trying to also speak about the, from the perspective of being Palestinian, for instance, extending solidarity, is because I think we talk a lot about how we want to receive it. Um, and in the Palestinian case, I've seen that become an exceptionalization of Palestine, right? You've seen in many places the slogan that it is the last colonial reality here, but it's not. And I want to kind of close in on this, where it's so important um, to recognize our connectedness, but it's also important to recognize that that's not the reason um, we are trying to help each other out of these oppressive uh, systems. Thank you.